Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Pastor Josh. Welcome to Cornerstone Evangelical Baptist Church to our 10 a.m. service. We're glad you're here to join us. Here's a video for you to help you prepare your hearts for worship this morning. first song is called Let Everything That Has Breath. If you're at home, I want to encourage you to stand up or stretch a little bit. Let's sing praises to our Lord this morning. Let everything. to give you some time now to pray. Remember, when we come to worship, we come holy before him. The only way to do that is to confess our sins to him. Even though he already died for us, this is about our relationship with him. So go ahead and take some time to pray.
in the morning. In the morning you sing over me. I receive your mercy. Your faithfulness is clear to me, clear to see. Constant every day. Sing that verse again. In the morning. In the morning you sing over me. I receive your mercy. Your faithfulness is clear to see. Constant every day, every breath. Every breath I breathe an invitation to believe you are creating something good. Though the season doesn't tell my story, I know you'll move mountains for me. You're just that good. So I'll give thanks to God when I don't have enough. Cause he's more than enough. And he knows what I need. So I'll give thanks to God when I don't have enough. Cause he's more than enough. And he knows what I need. Second verse, in the silence. In the silence, I choose to believe. You're working in the way. Though the future isn't clear to me, I trust you anyway, even every breath. Every breath I breathe an invitation to believe you are creating something good. Though the season doesn't tell my story, for me you're just that good and I'll give thanks to God when I don't have enough cause he's more than enough and he knows what I need so I'll give thanks to God when I don't have enough cause he's more than enough and he knows what I need. So why do I worry? Why do I worry? Why do I worry? Why do I worry? God knows what I need. what I need. Sing that again. Why do I worry? Why do I worry? Why do I worry? God knows what I need. Why do I worry? Why do I worry? Why do I worry? God knows what I need. So I'll, so I'll enough cause he's more than enough and he knows what I need so I'll give thanks to God when I don't have enough cause he's more than enough and he knows what I need so I'll give thanks to God when I don't have enough cause he's more than enough and he knows what I need, so I'll give thanks to God when 
I don't have enough Cause he's more than enough And he knows what I need Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you for always taking care of us, for always giving us just enough. Lord, I pray that you will help us to utilize what you give to us, not for ourselves, not for the people around us, but for your kingdom. Lord, we can come to you and know that we don't have to worry. We can come to you knowing that you're going to take care of us, even though it seems like we don't have enough, that we don't have what we need. But Lord, you are all that we need. Help us to understand that more, realize that more, and see that more. And that, Lord, that we can always praise you with our mouths, with every breath that we have, no matter what happens. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sunday Worship. I'm Brian Lee, and I'm your host for today. I'm so glad to be worshiping with all of you virtually. Right now, we're going to go into a time of tithing and offering. So as Thanksgiving is approaching, one of the many ways that we can show God that we are thankful for everything he's given us is to give back a little portion in the form of tithing and offering. Just a reminder, there's no obligation to give, but God loves his cheerful givers. This month is Stewardship Month. As we continue the theme of unity in the spirit, let's challenge ourselves to build the kingdom of God by sharing the time, talents, and treasures that he has given to us to bless those around us. For this week, let's take some time out to connect with somebody that we haven't connected with lately. This could be a friend, relative, coworker, whoever is on your mind. If you don't have anybody on your mind, pray and ask God. I'm sure he'll put somebody on your mind. Today is also the last day to record a one minute video answering the question, how has God worked in your life? Please email these to Phil Wong and thank you for everybody who's already submitted a video. Next week, we are going to be having a combined English service at 1115. For those of you in a CBS class, please check with your teacher to see if there is class next week. We will also be having a Zoom gathering together from 1215 to 1 p.m. afterwards. Let's not have COVID prevent us from seeing each other. If you missed anything or just want to stay connected, please download the Church Center app and select the Sunday 10 a.m. worship from the drop down menu. I hope that all of you guys have a great week and I hope that God speaks to you through Pastor Josh. Good morning. Thanks, Brian. And just one more emphasis, too, is next Sunday, we're going to have our combined service. So do not come at 10 a.m. We will not have a service at 10 a.m. We're going to combine together at 1115. And so don't worry. All those links are going to be on our website at cbc.net. And so we'll always remind you, too. And if you have any questions, feel free to connect with us at cbc.net slash connect. Or you can always contact um, somebody from our church if you know somebody. Before we start our sermon this morning, let me pray for us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you again that you have given us so much and so many opportunities to reach out to people and so many opportunities to, to share your goodness and what we've been thankful for this month, Lord, and just all the past years and everything that you've done. Lord, give us this morning where we can come before you to hear your heart, to understand you more so that we know how we can glorify your name. We know how to build your kingdom. We know how to bring unity into a divisive world, Lord, that's full of sin and full of um, suffering and, and death and all these things that um, can be eternal if we don't have faith in you. So Lord, change our hearts from the inside out. Speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so again, this month is stewardship month, and we don't use that word a lot, but you know, really it's about focusing on things that God has given to us so that we can take care of his kingdom. Remember, I was talking, um, actually in the beginning of the year now, we were talking about uh, one kingdom and how God has designed us so that we can rule with him. That's really what our purpose here is, is to enjoy things that God created. But sin messed it up. 
right? Things are not the way that it's supposed to be anymore. And so this month, as we're kind of thinking about, you know, reflecting on the things that God has given to us, even though I know a lot of things maybe have been taken away, whether it's through the fires or through um, this pandemic, I mean, I know a lot of, you know, people have lost their jobs, people have probably even lost their homes. Um, I know a lot of people who have lost a lot of pay. I mean, there's just so many things that we have lost. But I think it's a time for us to also reflect on the giver. He is the one who gives. He is also the one who takes away. And so the question a lot now is, why is this happening? Why are we rolling back on, you know, all opening, you know, indoor dining and things like that, just all these things going on? And it's so easy to just see and go, wow, you know, things are getting worse. But I think the perspective that we should have is, again, through God's eyes, and to realize he is the one who's still in control. Not that he likes that these things are happening, but he's allowing them, very different. He's allowing these things to happen, I think, so that we can really see who the giver is. And so one of the things I want to challenge you this morning is, you know, our main point this morning is that the giver is king over us. This next slide here. And he is the king over us because he is the one who takes care of us. And so I want to challenge you this morning, which king do you serve? Right? What is king over your life? Let me explain this a little bit. You know, it's anything that controls or influences your decision. That's what's king over your life. If you notice, any type of decision that you make, there's a thought process behind it. There's a heart behind it. There's a motivation, intention behind it. And a lot of times, maybe we're thinking of decisions based on our own safety, maybe the safety of somebody else, right, in this pandemic. Maybe some decisions are because it's something that we want, something we desire. Um, it could be, for those of you who are parents, maybe it's your desire to, to make your kids happy and safe, so you will do whatever it takes to make sure that they are. Um, so whatever controls and influences your um, decisions, that's what's king over your life. You know, I had a friend who was, you know, obsessed back in, you know, a long time ago, obsessed with a girl. And all his decisions was around making her happy. He used all three, time, talents, treasures. He spent all of those things to make her happy. All his decisions was to make her happy. And he sacrificed a lot of stuff, right? A lot of time, um, a lot of other relationships too. I know that he definitely, you know, sacrificed me at times um, to be with this other girl. And so a lot of things come into our decision making. And the challenge again is, what is king over your life? This girl was king over my friend's life, right? Who is king over your life? What is king over your life? What drives your decisions? What influences you to do what you do? And I hope that as we come to worship God, your decision for being here is because you want to grow in a deeper relationship with God, and you also want to build community. And so thank you for those of you who are um, chatting it up right now. And it's okay, you're not going to bother me. But I hope that you can also know that we're here to build community with each other as well. So we can spur each other on and care for one another and be able to edify one another and encourage each other to know who our king is, to know who the true giver is. And so we're going to look today into Luke chapter 19. And I want to preface this a little bit. Um, do your decisions reflect your allegiance to Jesus? Or is your family member, or is your job, or is your game, whatever it is, if, is that what you have allegiance to, right? Jesus is the giver of life. And so he was the one who, if he's the one who gives and takes away, I believe that we should see him as king and serve him only. So in Luke, this is actually a different version of a parable that we're all very familiar with, the parable of the talents. But here, this is the talent of Amina. Of Amina. And so in Luke, the reason why this is here, it's interesting because this is right before Jesus is going to go into Jerusalem, right, to be crucified. 
but he's going to Jerusalem because the Jewish people are waiting for this savior, right? They're waiting for this earthly king. But what they're going to find out is this is not the king that they expected. And so here's this parable to kind of bring out that uh, relationship between God's people and him as, as Jesus as the giver. So let's take a look here in Luke chapter 19, verse 11 to 27. We're going to take it in chunks here. So we're going to go 11 to 14 first. So it says here, <clears throat> while they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable. This is Jesus. Because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed as king and then to return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But, this, but his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. And so very interesting here as this parable begins, right? Um, why are we talking about minas here? Mina and talents, just a little background. Talents is um, a large sum. It's like year, a year, I think it's more than a year or two, of, um, of wages, whereas a mina is really four months wages. So it's a lot less. So that's kind of the difference between the other parable. But here, the focus, if you can see, it's about this man, this man of noble birth, who has come from a distant country, right, a different place, and coming to be appointed king. But people are not happy. People are not seeing this man as their king. Um, and he has his servants here, right? And he's giving them this four months of wages and telling them, hey, here, I want you to use this. I want you to work it. And But people are not liking him here. And so, you know, the question I want to bring up the first point here is actually, don't reject the giver, right? Really know who Jesus is, right? Is he really the one leading your life? Is he really the one who's in charge of your decision-making, your influences, right? Do you like the leaders in your life? Do you like your boss, your managers, your supervisors? Do you like your parents? Do you like your teachers? You know, a lot of these are people that God has put in our lives to, to lead us, to take care of us, right? But I think a lot of times, and this is a fair statement, I think, but not all leaders are good, right? Not saying that they're all bad or all good. You know, sometimes they do things that do hurt us. But I think my point here is Jesus is here trying to tell them, I am your true leader and I'm not going to fail you but I'm going to give you a, a little bit of what I have so that I can see whether you truly trust me or not, whether you really know that I am truly your Savior or not. And so the truth here is that Jesus will never hurt us. God will never hurt us, right? It feels like things do hurt us, but he doesn't intend, he doesn't want to, he doesn't hurt us. He only wants the best for us. That's a very important truth to know. And so here, God is giving things to us so that we can take care of it. And it's really a, you're not going to fail when you do what he wants, what pleases him. Remember from last week? And so the giver, don't reject the giver know who he is, know his heart, learn to trust him. And he is the one who's given us our time, our talent, our treasures, right? Don't forget that. If he's given those things to us, this parable here is about how do we take care of what God has given to us? First, it begins with us trusting him, right? Don't reject the giver. Starting today, how can you learn to accept God as the leader in your life? How can you accept Jesus as your Lord? We already know about the Savior part, but Lord of your life. He's the one who directs your decisions, your attitudes, how to feel and how to think about things. And so next point here, number two, is the giver will give to those who are trustworthy. Let's take a look in that. Luke chapter 19, verse 15 to 19. 
And verse 15 here, it says, He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, you take charge of five cities. And so the giver will give to those who are trustworthy. And it's a little different here from the other parable, right? It's not that they get 10 more minas or five more minas. Here, they're given cities. I think that's so profound in a sense where this is about a kingdom. This is about ruling with God. This is about taking care of the little things, the small things, And when we're faithful to what God has given to us, God will bless us with way more than we can imagine. That's why it's not just about, you know, talents, which was a large sum. It's about minas. There's a lot smaller, a lot less. And it's to contrast this idea that when we take care of the small things, when we take care of the little stuff, when we can be obedient to God in the little things. And when I say little things, I'm talking about, you know, taking care of, um, something that might not seem like a very like high-profile thing. So, for example, I don't like to clean the toilet. <laughs> I don't like cleaning my bathroom. I do not like cleaning whatsoever. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's I'm lazy or whatever it is. My parents love cleaning. I don't know why. It's just they just love cleanliness. Like when they have their days off, they're cleaning. When I have my day off, I'm watching Netflix. So I don't do cleaning. But... There are times when, you know, you go into your own bathroom, because I kind of have my own bathroom there, and you kind of look at it, and you're like, okay, this is disgusting. I need to clean this. And so those little things, right, it's, it's I realized I'm responsible for this, right? Yeah, I can just go and do something else and not worry about it, but eventually it's going to hurt me in a sense, right, in the long run. And so I learned to take care of those little things, and I learned to just you know, wipe down or clean. And there's so much that goes into cleaning a toilet. You have to, like, use a brush. You have to use, you know, your Clorox. Just just a whole bunch of stuff. All those little things makes a big difference. Because you know what? Once I start to learn how to clean things and take care of stuff, then God knows that I can take care of bigger things. Because it's the heart that I've learned to have in taking care of something. And so if you're at home, all you high schoolers, middle schoolers, kids who are watching, don't get lazy. Don't not do chores. Start now. Do those little things, and you're going to learn the discipline and the responsibility because when you grow older, you're not going to have your parents there. You're not going to have anybody else to help you. You're going to have to live in your filth. And so you're going to have to need some discipline, but take care of the small stuff. That's my point. All of us, we all have to, adults even, Trust me, adults sometimes act like kids. We all need to take care of the little stuff. When we're trustworthy with the little things, God gives us way more. If we can take care of the little things in our homes, imagine the things we can do for God's church. Imagine all the restrooms that we could be cleaning at church that more people can come to hear his word. I know it totally jokes. But take care of the little things. Take care of those little things, and it's more than just those little things. God is watching your heart. God is watching your decisions of how much you take care of the things that he has given to us. He's given us a lot of things. Pick every little thing, and those are things that he's given to us because nothing belongs to us. Our breath does not belong to us. It's life given to us by God. So don't take these little things for granted. And the giver will give to those who are trustworthy. Trustworthy with the little things. And he will give us more. Not because we, like, deserve it or because we are selfish, but because he knows that he can trust us with his kingdom. He can trust us with the things that we have because we will be able to go out and really reach out to people, and really save lives, and really grow his kingdom. 
It starts in your home. And so even though we're shelter in place, there's a lot of things I know we can start doing now so we can continue learning how to build God's kingdom. And so my last point for today, number three. The reality is that the giver will take away and destroy those who are not trustworthy. And so this is a little crazy, but we'll, let's finish our passage here, and then we'll talk a little bit about that. Luke 19, 20 to 27. Then another servant, remember there was 10, right? In the parable of the talents, there was only three people there. There's 10 here, but there's one who, you know, gained 10 more. There's two who gained, there's another person who gained five more, and this is just everybody else, okay? Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. The master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has 10 minas. Sir, they said, he already has 10. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. Harsh language here, huh? And so the giver will take away and destroy those who are not trustworthy. And I think that's a very sobering fact. Next to a scary fact, too, is we can be wasting away, wasting resources, wasting the things that God has given to us, our time, our talent, our treasures, and he's, he's probably going to let you do it for a long time. That's how gracious and loving God is. But at the end of the day, if we're not faithful to what he's given to us, he will take it away. He will kill and destroy those who do not believe. And that's a harsh truth. And I know a lot of people may think, well, if God is so loving, why does he do that? It's because he's loving that he is just. It's because he's loving that he's giving you so much already but people have become wicked. They have taken advantage of this gracious giver. Yes, they should be punished. Yes, they deserve death. And that's something important that we need to know. And let's take a look at this person here, right? This is a little different because he didn't just, you know, the other guy in the parable of the talents, he buried it, right, to keep it safe in a sense. Here, it's a little different. This guy put it away in a piece of cloth. And this, um, the, the word, the Greek word for this cloth is the kind of cloth that, you know, the, the Jewish people or the people back then put around their neck, right, to kind of take care of the sweat. It's hot and desert and all that stuff. So it's like really disgusting and dirty. And, but he was very careless about it. Right? He wasn't putting it somewhere safe. He kind of put it somewhere where it was just convenient. Right? It wasn't like the best place for it. And he, not only that, but he laid it away, which means he hid it. He was hiding it. And why is he hiding it? He was afraid because he did not trust this king. What I mean by that is he was fearful. He was fearful that if he did something with it, that this king, king, this noble man would take away from him and he would have nothing. He was afraid of that. He was also afraid that if he didn't do anything with it, that he would also be punished. So it was a lose-lose situation for him. And that was his mentality. That was the way that he was seeing things. But it's not the way that God wants us to see things. He doesn't want us to be afraid of him. He doesn't want us to think that he is not trustworthy. He wants us to trust him. He wants us to take care of the things and know that he will bless us. It's not about the blessings. It's about the giver, right? But here, this man is driven by fear. He does not trust this king. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell these people. 
you know, you're here, you see the things that I'm doing, you say that I am, you know, this Messiah, but do you really trust me? If you do, I'm going to go and I'm going to die. I'm going to go away for a little while, but I want you to stay faithful to what I've given to you. Those are the true disciples of mine. Those are the ones who really are in the kingdom of God. And so he hid this thing, right, instead of keeping it safe because he was afraid of this king. He did not trust him. And so for us, I think what we need to learn from this is to really think twice about all the things that we have and what we do with it. So don't waste it away doing things that do not um, build God's kingdom. Don't waste your time playing games. Games are good. You, you need some of that, right? But don't waste your time doing things that pleases, you know, your, your family or your kids or, or your wife or whatever it is just for the sake of keeping them happy. That's not why we're here. We're here to encourage one another. We're here to point people to Christ. We're here to share with them that everything that we have, everything that you have comes from God. And the good thing is we get to use it to build his kingdom. We get to use it to invest in things that will last forever. And so don't waste your time. Don't waste your time during this pandemic here, just sitting there. Uh, maybe you're just doing work or whatever school, whatever it is you're doing, same thing every day, every day. And I want to challenge you to continue to build God's kingdom. How do we continue to bring unity in the church? I'm not just talking about Cornerstone, but all believers. You have all the things, the gifts, the talents, the time that you need to build God's kingdom. We need to look beyond what this world tells us and what we think. Let's look at it from God's perspective. I have one more verse that I want to share with you, and it's not in a slide, but I want you to turn to it, whether it's on your phone or your Bible. Go to Joshua, the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. And God really spoke this to me um, yesterday, actually during small group. Um, and it spoke volumes to me, and I can't believe that I for got this verse, but I'm so glad that it came back because I think God really wants me to know, and I think God wants us all to know what we're here for, what we're doing with the things that he's given to us. Joshua 24, verse 15, it says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your ancestors and served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you were living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And I love it. I did not even think about this, but this is Joshua in the book of the Bible and also the man Joshua a long, long time ago. And he is telling his people, in my household, I don't care if you want to serve anybody else,
will be able to spread God's word even better. And you can use all the gifts that he's given to you to bring people to Christ. But God's trying to figure out what, what is, what are you doing? Is it trustworthy? He's looking at your heart. He's looking at your attitude. And the last one, the giver will take away and destroy the untrustworthy people. And so again, kind of like last week, right, Cain and Abel, the reason why Cain was um, dejected, what did he do wrong? He had a bad attitude. He didn't trust God. God tried to give him different opportunities to say, hey, be careful, don't do that. But he wouldn't listen. And so don't be like Cain. Don't be like the other people who are not trustworthy with the time and the talents and the treasures that God has given to them. Be careful. These are warnings. You still got time. You still have an opportunity to change your attitude, to let God change your heart, to transform you. You got time. We thank God for his grace, his grace and his mercy to give us so many chances. I mean, that's what Ezra was about to, second chances. A lot of chances to turn back, take a look, and see who we serve. And so don't forget, Jesus is king over our lives. He is the Lord of your life. Let's not just act like it. Let's really let him be the giver, the king over our life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for these reminders, these warnings, and these stories that help us understand what it means to be your servant. And Lord, you showed us what that means by you being the perfect example of a servant who came humbly before us to make yourself lower than anybody else so that you could be lifted up. Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for us. That is just so much more than just a death on the cross, but it's a way to erase all the barriers that keep us from, from serving you, from giving back what you deserve. Lord, this frees us to serve you even more, to serve you even better. And Lord, we thank you for the, the blessings that you give to us because we don't deserve any of it at all. And yet you still give. So Lord, let us not take those things for granted. Let us be trustworthy, help us to be trustworthy with the little things and to have the right attitude that everything you give to us is a gift and we should take care of it. At the, to the best that we can. Thank you. Help us. Use us, Lord. Open our eyes and our hearts so that we can serve you. Thank you for being our king. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I love this song, Build My Life. And I think that every time we sing this, I hope that it goes deeper and deeper for you. And it really is. Um, it really is a a prayer worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus, a name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Live for you. Holy. Holy, there is no one like there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me let's take it
it from the top again. Worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus a name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever save worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you, we live for you, holy, holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my eyes and wonder and show me who you are and fill Beside you, open up. 
trust in you alone and I will not be shaken let's pray dear Lord we just thank you that you were the one who allows us to build this kingdom Lord thank you for giving us all of the things that we have maybe things that are not significant, but Lord, it still comes from you because you're good. Let us not waste these things. Let us not use them for ourselves and our personal gain or, or in things that don't bring life. Help us to use it for your kingdom. Change our attitudes, Lord. Change our hearts. And may we be able to come and serve you and serve you only. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great week. And don't forget to, to take care of the little things. Don't forget to reflect on the things that God has given to us. And also don't forget that next week we're going to have our Thanksgiving combined service. Full. So there will not be a 10 a.m. service. We will be combined at 11.15 together. That link will be online at cbc.net. And hopefully we'll be able to see you afterwards because we also have a Zoom gathering so we can see each other and encourage each other and, and get to know one another as well because it's about coming together, learning about God, and also building a community of believers. We're going to end a little early today, so hopefully you can also join us for our connection corner afterwards. We do have a Zoom link. Go to cbc.net slash events, and we will see you in a couple of minutes. And so thanks for joining us. And again, we have prayer meetings on Wednesday as well. God bless.